Good morning. God bless you. I hope that you're having an awesome time in the service today. Welcome to the Revelation San Antonio again. And we're getting ready to get into the Word today. We're going to be reading out of continuing the message last week that we started, Changing the Atmosphere. Changing the Atmosphere. In 2 Chronicles 5, 13 and 14, we're going to read that again to refresh our memory from last week. If you would, turn your Bibles to 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. We're going to be looking at it. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. And it says here, And it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Amen. Let us pray this morning. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. We thank you for what you've already done this week, Lord God. We thank you for what you've already done this morning in the service already, Lord. We just ask you right now, Lord, let me decrease as the Holy Spirit increased this morning, Lord God, and reveal the word unto your people this morning, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. So here in the scripture, we're talking about changing the atmosphere. Now, last week, just to refresh your memory, we talked about no spiritual hindrances. No spiritual hindrances. We also talked about no business as usual services. So get ready. No business as usual services. Also, an atmosphere of the supernatural. As well as four, no limitations allowed to be placed on anyone. An atmosphere of anyone can be received. Number five, an atmosphere of people are important. And number six that we went over, not a defeated spirit. We can't have a defeated spirit and change the atmosphere. So this morning we're going to talk about number seven through 12. So number seven I want to talk to you is about no hold the fort philosophy here. No hold the fort philosophy here. We need to reach our city for Christ. We need to reach our city for Christ. According to Mark 16 and 15, it says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Again, he also said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, it says, But ye receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in all of Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Right here is our Jerusalem. Wherever we're at is our Jerusalem. We have to start somewhere. It is our duty to evangelize this city and cause the message of Jesus Christ to spread across the continents. But it starts at home. It starts right here in the very midst of our city. It starts with you. It starts with me. And we have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all who are ready to hear and share with them. We cannot have a no hold the fort philosophy. It is our duty to evangelize their city, and we are charged with this duty by the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of all creation, to reach out and touch those who are lost. We can't keep such a great salvation all to ourselves. It's not just ours to keep. The Lord has given it to everyone to share. There are times of visitation for every city, and God has called us to reach our city for Him. So we're currently experiencing a visitation from the Spirit of God, and we need to go and reach the lost at all costs. The Lord is moving in a mighty way across the world. He's moving in a mighty way around the globe, showing His power and His might and showing His love, His magnificent displays of action. Yet some have not recognized that God is doing and what he is doing right now in this very moment, in this time in our lives. So this caused Jesus, though, to weep over Jerusalem, if you remember, when they missed one of their times of the visitation. 
In Luke 19 and in, in 41 through 44, he tells us of this account. It says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thee, peace. But now they are hid from thine eyes, for the days shall, came, shall come upon thee that mine enemies shall cast a trench against thee compass thee around and keep thee in on every side and 44 and shall lay thee even with the ground and they chill and thy children within thee and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation you see the people here were brought down by their enemies not because it was just god's will but because they didn't recognize the visitation of god let us not be the ones that cast down or are cast down because of our stubborn mule-headedness because we don't want to go out of these four walls and reach our city for Christ. We must also understand that we, number eight, have to have an atmosphere of financial blessing. An atmosphere of financial blessing. We must stop making excuses for our disobedience in these areas. We have to stop functioning in our dysfunction. Less than 25% of people in many churches faithfully support the church through offerings and on a consistent basis. Fewer than 25% serves the church with their time and their talents. The church serves as a multifold purpose. It serves not only do we spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, but the church is here to help people. In order for the church to help people, the church has to have the recourses to do so. Money is just one thing. Money is just one thing. Your time and talents go a long way in ministering to those who may be sick and in need someone to, to reach out and come to cook for them or maybe to clean up for them a little bit. We as a church need to volunteer and learn to volunteer to give the resources that God has given to us and, and give our money, give our time, give our talents and our abilities to Him. The church was established to be a blessing to those who have need of what we have to offer. We must understand that God has not given us these things in order to hoard them, but he wants us to give a, be having an atmosphere of a financial blessing. We must also understand the point nine that I want to make this morning is this, is that we need to have an atmosphere of communion where the voice of God can be heard clearly. An atmosphere of communion where the voice of God can be heard clearly. It is sad but true that we have a lot of church without ever hearing from God at all. Yet there's a fresh outpouring of His Spirit today. And every single day there's an outpouring of God's Spirit if we only listen and heed to His voice. He is speaking to those who have an ear to hear what He is saying. Have we grown so confident that we don't need to hear the voice of the Lord in our time? Have we gotten to be so good that we have no need for wisdom and grace? Have we become so righteous that we have no need to hear from the creator of the universe? Have we reached a place in our culture that God only needs to speak to those people? Lord forbid that we've gotten this place because we need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to cry out for a word from Almighty God. We need to develop a hunger and a desire. We need to yearn for a visitation of the Holy Spirit. We should be seeking Him in every crack, in every crevice, in every cranny, every corner, every nook of our lives. We should be seeking God. We should seek communion with Him every day, in every way, and we should mourn when we're not in that place. But we need to have an atmosphere where God is there. We need to have that communion with God. We need to commune with Him on a daily basis. Speak with Him. Walk with Him. Just like Adam did in the Garden of Eden. He walked with Him and he talked with God. We need to spend time with God and have that communion and not just talk to Him and, and, and basically throw up at Him by praying and saying what we want. But we need to listen 
to his voice. We need to listen for what he is speaking to us in our spirit. God may not necessarily speak audibly to us. God may not necessarily speak loudly to us, but he can speak to us in a still small voice and he can whisper into us, into our spirits and reveal himself unto us through his word. But if we don't have that communion, then how can we listen? We need that communion with God in order to be able to change our atmosphere. We also, number 10 that I want to make this morning is that no premises about the future. No premises about the future. There are many in the church today that are pessimistic about our future. Let me share something with you today. In, in Psalm 93, 1, he says, in Psalm 93, 1, he said, The Lord reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. The Lord is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also established that it cannot be moved. In Psalm 22 and 28, he said, For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Again, he said in Revelation 11 and 15, he said, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. You see, God is in control. And so we should have an atmosphere of faith, knowing, not being pessimistic about tomorrow, not feeling like, oh, oh, it's me. Not feeling like Eeyore on Winnie the Pooh. Oh, I'm okay. And we're feeling so pessimistic. We're not optimistic at all. We don't have any hope for tomorrow. We need to liven up and realize that God is in control and everything he is going to take care of it. God is always in control. And in Psalm 37 and 5, he says, commit thy ways unto the Lord and trust always in him and he shall bring it to pass. You see, we must know that God will fulfill his word. He will fulfill the vision and the promises that he has given to us in our lives. He will keep us. He will lead us. He will guide us. He will direct our path. But we must understand and trust in him because if not, we're out of luck, folks. We must understand that we have to commit our ways unto him. Quit being so pessimistic and be optimistic for a change. And Proverbs 3 in 5 and 6, he says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. You see, our job is to incorporate with him, is to cooperate with him, to work with him, to seek God's face. Quit working against God by worrying about everything and every problem and every trial and every tribulation that's ever going to happen and focus on God. Be optimistic about tomorrow by focusing on God, by studying His Word, by seeking His face. Point number 11 that I want to make is this, that we must have an atmosphere vision. An atmosphere vision An atmosphere where people can see the invisible and do the impossible. Let me say that again. An atmosphere where people can see the invisible and do the impossible. In John 2 and 23, it says, Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. And when they saw the miracles which he did, Jesus in his earthly ministry did many mighty and wonderful things. You see, he healed the sick. He made the blind to see. He caused the deaf to hear. He made the lame to walk. He turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 with only five loaves of bread and two fish. He walked on the water. He spoke to the winds and they ceased. He even raised the dead. In John 21 and 25, it says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books 
that should be written. Amen. Also, John wrote in 14 and 12, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, that works that I do, shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. What do you see when you look at the church? Do you just see all the imperfections, or do you see what God sees? God sees a people that has empowered through the gift of the Holy Spirit. God sees a people that he is expecting to move, do many great and mighty things in the name of the Lord. God sees a people that he is expecting will carry out a great commission and operate in the gifts of the Spirit in an effort to win the loss and make believers out of them who do not believe. We need to see what God sees. We need to have the same vision of the church that God has. George Barnum says, Vision is the single most important dimension of a successful ministry. We have to have vision. We have to see what God sees and not what our natural eye sees, not what we see in the natural, because in our natural we may get discouraged, but in the spirit, if we see what God sees, we'll see great and mighty things and we will succeed in him. Point number 12, the last point I want to make this morning is this, is an atmosphere of worship. An atmosphere of worship. An atmosphere of worship is so important, dear friends and of God. It is an atmosphere where the Spirit of God is released in its fullness. An atmosphere where the Spirit of God is released in its fullness. My friends, we have to get in a place in our worship where there is a heartfelt adoration towards God. When we come into His house, we should feel a sense of reverence, a sense of love, a sense of power, a sense of love. We should have a strong sense of urgency to praise Him, to lift Him up, to exalt Him, to shout out our praise for He is, to shout out expressions of thanksgiving for what He has done, to give Him glory, to give Him honor, to magnify His name above all created things. We should leave everything else outside the doors of this church Reach out to Him. Draw near to Him. We should consider our own lives worth nothing except for the privilege and honor that we serve Him. When true worshipers explode in our hearts, when true worship explodes in our heart, great things will happen. If you really want to see the glory of God come down in this place, we have to create an atmosphere of true worship. We have to understand that all of these things are how we change the atmosphere. Church, when we begin to do these things I mentioned here today and last week, I can give you the insurance of one thing. There's one thing I'm most certain of. If we do this, I can promise that God will rise and his enemies will be scattered. My friends, God has a purpose for this church. He is trying to raise up a people who will conduct themselves in a manner worthy of the kingdom of God. I have seen this church scattered more than once because people would not do what the Lord was calling them to do. But he is raising up an army to do a work that the church was put here to do. If we're not going to be with him and gathering with him, Jesus said that we're against him. He who's not for him must be against him. So we need to realize that. And we need to be for God and not work against God. Amen. Amen and amen. I hope this message encourages you this morning. And I hope that you'll be lifted up and that you'll change the atmosphere of those around you. You'll change the atmosphere of the church by changing the atmosphere of you. Because you're the only one that can make a difference in your life and you can change the atmosphere of yourself and all of those around you. And by changing yourself and changing others, you'll change the church because we are the church, dear friends of God, this morning. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord God. I ask you to touch each and every person under the sound of my voice this morning. I pray for healing in their body for those that need healing. I pray for salvation for those that need salvation, Lord. I pray for deliverance for those that need deliverance, Lord. And Father, I just thank you, Lord, that we're changing the atmosphere today, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church say amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you for listening to the message this morning. May God richly bless you and keep you today. That is my prayer. God bless. Amen.